morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to see all of you this morning, and welcome to those joining us online. You may be seated. This is Christ the King Sunday, the final Sunday before Advent, when we celebrate our Lord and Savior as King of Kings. And so with that in mind, our gathering chorus this morning is, He is Exalted. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Merciful Father, each time we gather together for worship, we pray your kingdom come. But we confess to you, Lord, that we don't really stop to think about what those words mean. Although we say we want justice and righteousness and mercy and grace for all, we each have our own plans and agendas, and we want to rule our world. Lord God, forgive us for all the times we set ourselves in your place. Loving God, we live in a world where people would rather idolize and worship singers and actors and sports figures rather than worship you as King of Kings. And we confess to you this morning there are times we do the same. And so we pray and ask you to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for failing to enthrone Jesus as King in our lives. Forgive us for failing to serve him each and every day instead of just on Sunday mornings. Lord, we know that you want us to live out our faith every day, and you want to guide and direct us each and every day, that you have joy and blessings for us each and every day, but only if we turn our hearts and minds to you. And so we pray that even in this moment, we will acknowledge the sin in our lives that keeps us from drawing closer to you, and that we will seek to avoid the ways that lure us away from you. Through our service this day, help us to better understand what it means to have Jesus as our King and to seek to serve him. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. The Bible assures us that Christ has set us free from our sins through his death on the cross and that we have the promise of eternal life through his resurrection. Know that through your faith in Christ, you have been forgiven. Amen. And I invite you to stand now as we have our responsive reading for today from Psalm 47. <clears throat> Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He, he chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing, sing praises, praises to God, sing, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Amen. Once they're seated. Right. 
Uh, just a reminder that fun script orders go in, I think it's next Sunday, if you keep getting this mixed up, um, but you can speak to the elders if you'd like to place orders, and they have also yellow sheets available of special sales um, that are on for the month of November and December. Also a reminder that the Women's Association are doing a toilet paper drive for gifts from the heart, and anyone who would like to help out with that, you can bring donations to the church. I know many of you did this morning and next Sunday as well. This coming Tuesday at 9 a.m., assuming we have power, <laughs> with the storm they're predicting, who knows? The plan at this point is to gather at the church at 9 a.m. to decorate the church for the Christmas season. So we'll keep you posted. Um, and coming up next Sunday, November 28th, is um, first Sunday of Advent and also Communion. And you know how we like to celebrate uh, special achievements for members of our church family, and hopefully you saw the slide for the pre-service announcements, but for those who didn't see the announcement slide, we want to congratulate Lloyd Compton, he's not here right now, but uh, he recently received uh, Holland College Distinguished Alumni Award for his contribution to our community, so we want to congratulate Lloyd for winning the prestigious award. I wanted to make another announcement this morning. On Tuesday, I'm flying to Italy. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna be um, on the ground where one of our padres saved the lives of 40 soldiers during the Battle of the Foglia River. I'm gonna be presenting that padre's story as a drama in my World War II uniform. And honoring, it's gonna be filmed, and uh, then I'm honoring the graves of, of uh, some of our padres who died. I'm traveling to England, meeting with the UK chaplain historian, and also uh, honoring some of our Padres' graves there as well. And I'll be returning on December the 8th. So, uh, needless to say, my wife is thrilled that I'm <laughs> going to be well, in England the, at this time. 18 months ago, they asked him to go and do this, and it was canceled last fall, and then rebooked for this fall. The film crew are already in Italy waiting for him, so um, he was asked to do this as a, through the Chatham General's office, so... With the storm coming, I'm thinking maybe that prayer that I said if he's not meant to go. <laughs> Oops. I learned years ago not to mess around with Paul's prayers. <laughs> so please pray. <laughs> and, and obviously your support and care for Paul and Susie will on the way is much appreciated. Yeah, you can imagine our nerves are just slightly frayed right now. So anyway, we're trusting in God, right? Right. <laughs> All right, let's take a moment to uh, pray to dedicate our offering today and to ask God for guidance. Let's pray. Lord God, as we bring our offerings today, we offer you our thanks, our love, our worship, and our money as a sign of our gratitude to you for all you have given to us. Please bless what we offer and use it and each one of us to spread the good news of the gospel. Loving God, we give you thanks for all the ways you speak to us and especially for your word to us in the Bible. We thank you for the lessons we can learn when we take time to read it. And as we hear your word this morning and all that Tom has prepared, we pray that you will stir within us a desire to not just listen, but to respond to what we hear in faith. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the twenty fifth chapter, reading verses fourteen through thirty. One of Jesus' parables, the parable of the talents. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five talents more. <clears throat> In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two talents more. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. 
And the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow? And gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, Throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. So I begin this morning, I invite you to take a look at this remarkable video. We leave you tonight with a traffic jam on a highway north of Toronto, not caused by gridlock or a car accident, but something unexpected that fell from the sky. CTV's Heather Butts now on the plane and the unplanned landing. When it comes to traffic disruptions, today's made for some incredible footage. Watch as this pilot, forced to make an emergency landing, navigates between a bridge and a highway traffic board. He brings it down perfectly to cruise under the sign and rolls to a stop on Highway 407. Always make sure to stick to your flight training and follow everything. It may you think it might not happen to you. I never thought it would happen to me, but it did. And like I said, I'm happy that I'm safe. The Piper aircraft had just left Buttonville Airport after completing its 100-hour inspection with two experienced pilots on board. We started to have experience in engine failure. It started sputtering. Once we turned back to Buttonville, or turned towards Buttonville, we knew we couldn't make the field. Um, it was a really tough decision. He was cruising between buildings and within a busy airspace. Just look as this other plane flies between our news chopper and the ground. They looked for a available area. Highway 407 was a perfect location. Uh, they did a textbook uh, forced approach, uh, forced landing onto the highway. No damage to the airplane, no injuries to the occupants, no other vehicles involved on the highway. That is so scary. A surprise from the sky for highway drivers. All of a sudden, it was just this large object up ahead, and it was just, it was really surreal, and we obviously had no idea, and then all of a sudden, we're slamming on our brakes. The pilot, a flight instructor himself, says he stayed focused as his plane was losing altitude and power. He credits his training for the successful touchdown. The unexpected lane closure lasted a few hours as crews worked to remove the aircraft. Always fly the airplane, aviate, navigate, communicate. Advice from a pilot who went from the runway to the roadway safely. Heather Butts, CTV News, Toronto. Can you imagine how you would feel if you were driving along and all of a sudden an airplane came out of the sky and landed on the road in front of you? And what must the pilot have been going through? No airplane pilot can practice landing on a freeway in the middle of Canada's largest city. And yet the pilot in the video made a perfect landing with no damage to the plane and most of all with no injuries to anyone. When he was in interviewed afterwards, he said, I leaned on my training and I kept flying the plane. On January 15, 2009, there was another remarkable landing. U.S. Airways Flight 1549 lost all power after taking off from JFK Airport in New York City. The Airbus A320 had hit a flock of geese, which knocked out both engines. 
Without any power, Captain Sullenberger did what many considered miraculous. He landed the airplane without any power in the middle of the Hudson River. Despite <coughs> the crash landing and the airplane quickly filling with water, everyone on board got out safely. When he was interviewed afterwards, he said, I relied on my years of experience and I was determined to fly the airplane. His wise words were based on what he had learned as a teenager from his flight instructor who said, Never forget, no matter what's happening, fly the airplane. Sadly, not every such story has a happy ending. Paul and I sometimes watch the TV series Mayday that chronicles the true stories of airplane flights that encounter danger in the air and the subsequent investigations of what went wrong. We've noticed an interesting trend. When the National Transport Safety Board reveals its findings after extensive investigations, they often have remarked that a disaster could have been avoided if pilots had followed their training and instincts and not become distracted by other influences. In short, disasters could be avoided if pilots stayed focused on flying the airplane rather than relying on technology. Each and every day, you are meant to fly the airplane. Not the kind of airplane that takes off from airports. The airplane that I'm referring to is something much more personal. Each and every day, you are meant to fly the airplane that is your life. So the question that we each need to ask ourselves this morning is this. When it comes to your life, are you flying the plane? Or is someone or something else flying your plane? Decades ago, University of Toronto professor and sociologist Marshall McLuhan made a telling statement. When asked by his students his opinion of television and booming electronic technology, he said, the medium is the message. The medium is the message. Meaning, media and technology have a message that they want you to follow, and in fact, that wants to control you. When I have Padres hours with soldiers, I like to ask the question, how long could you go without your cell phone? Could you go an hour, two hours, a day, a week, a month without your cell phone? Most of the soldiers then groan at the thought of being separated from their cell phones. So I ask them, if you can't go without your cell phone, you need to ask yourself why. Why do I think I need my cell phone all the time? I like to remind these soldiers that during the Second World War, when soldiers from PEI went to war, many of them were gone for two years, three years, four years, even up to six years. And none of them had cell phones or text messages or emails or even phone calls. All they had were handwritten letters and those usually took several months to arrive overseas from Canada. So I end by asking them, does technology control you, or do you control it? It's another way of asking, who's flying the plane that is your life? Now, you may be hearing this message this morning and think to yourself, well, Tom, I have no problem with technology. You may not even own a cell phone, but our scripture lesson today reminds us of something we all struggle with, something that likes to take over control of our lives, especially when we least expect it. In our New Testament lesson, we read a parable of Jesus that has become known as the parable of the talents. Jesus said that a wealthy owner was going away and he called three of his servants and gave them each a different amount of money. When the owner returned, he asked the three servants for an accounting of what they had done with their investments. The first two servants had invested wisely and had each earned more talents for the owner. But the third servant was lazy 
and did nothing with the talent. In fact, he actually buried it. And the servant told the owner why he buried the money. And he said, I was afraid, so I went and hid your talent in the ground. He said, I was afraid. Fear often controls us. Fear not only robs us of peace, fear leaves us confused, fear leaves us shaken, fear leaves us doubting, fear even leaves us paralyzed. Fear can inhibit you from flying your plane. In fact, people's fears can cause them to crash the plane. But it doesn't have to be that way. Notice what the owner said to each of the first servants. And notice that he used the same words when he responded to what they had done. Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. The owner didn't comment on how they did their work or what they should have done or ways to improve. Instead, he commended them for doing what they were supposed to be doing, for taking what they had been given and making the most of it. We might even say he commended them for flying the plane. It's too easy for each one of us to become distracted and allow our lives to be controlled by outside influences rather than trusting our experience and our God-given instincts. None of us are perfect, far from it, but each one of you have the experience and the strengths and the gifts and the ability to fly the plane that is your life and to fly it well. There's something else that each one of you have. In the follow-up interview with the pilot who successfully landed the plane on Highway 407 in Toronto, the pilot also said, someone up there was watching over me. He was right. You never fly the plane alone. God is your co-pilot. He is the one you can turn to any moment in prayer. He is the one who has used the joys and sorrows of the past to better equip you to fly the plane now. And he is the one who knows about the flight plan that includes all the turbulence and all the good things that you will encounter in the journey ahead. Don't allow technology or people or influences or other distractions to control you or to control your life. You need to fly the plane of your life. And because you are a Christian, you never fly the plane alone. Jesus is always with you. More than 3,000 years ago, a shepherd on the hillsides of Bethlehem understood exactly what we are talking about this morning. There weren't any airplanes then, but the shepherd knew that God wanted him to live his life and not be swayed by the distractions that can come against us. He also knew that God was going to be with him every step of the journey. And that's why with the utmost confidence that shepherd was able to proclaim the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalmist David knew that God was calling him to control his own life, to live it to the full, and to not be distracted or discouraged by life's fears. He was right. And we need to do the same. Church family, when it comes to your life, who's flying the plane? Is it you or is it something or someone else? God is giving you your life and he wants you to live it to the full and not be distracted or discouraged by things around you, including fears. He promises to be your co-pilot every day through your life. And he wants us to remember, no matter what's happening, you fly the plane. Amen. 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 And as we think about... God wanting each of us to live the life he's given to us. The choir is going to sing forever yours to be. <clears throat>
Heavenly Father, as Tom has reminded us, sometimes we become distracted by things around us and we forget to simply fly the plane and enjoy the life we have been given. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with life and for the assurance that throughout all of its joys and sorrows, all of its trials and triumphs, all of its ups and downs, you are with us. And we know that with you as our co-pilot, we won't go wrong. Loving God, we pray for our church family and community this day. We pray that each one of us will take the talents and gifts that you have given to us and use them for good as we live each day. We thank you for the blessings we enjoy and yet so often take for granted like our families, our friends, our work, this church family, and the freedom we have to gather for worship. Please continue to watch over and guide us, and please provide for each of us what we need. We pray for continued strength and healing for Trevor and also for Jamie Casely. We pray for all those who are awaiting medical tests and for those who are beginning treatment that they will be given the answers and the treatment they need. And Lord, we pray for Tom as he prepares to travel overseas. We ask that you please watch over and protect him and keep him safe and healthy and return him safely to us. Lord God, as we think about our nation this day, we think of the people of British Columbia who are affected by the devastating flooding. We pray especially for the families of those who have lost loved ones, that you will comfort them in their grief. And we pray also for those who have lost their homes and livelihoods. Please strengthen them and provide for their needs and show us what we can do to help. Loving God, as we begin this new week, we pray that if we encounter any difficulties, we will not allow them to distract us, but with faith and trust in you to guide us, we will fly the plane. And we pray all of our prayers giving thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing praise this morning is, Take my life and let it be.